My name is J.D. Slackert. I'm a full-time fiction author, so I've written a few different novels, kind of ranging in more like the YA coming-of-age genre, but I also do plenty of speaking events uh, where I go to high schools, middle schools, charities, and talk about my story and kind of what I'm up to. And I'm also a bit in the film world as well, looking to adapt some of my novels, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a writer by trade. Calabasas has always been home for me. I kind of moved a lot as a kid, but that was the one place I sort of settled the most, going to AC Stell Middle School, but I grew up in Calabasas. November 2018, my first novel, Moonflower, had been published three weeks prior to that, and I just graduated from college a few months prior to that, so I was 22 years old, kind of on the high of having released my first book and going around doing speaking events and having this incredible experience of being an author, and then the Woolsey fire began. The night that this all began, I was at my dad's house uh, in Oak Park with my brothers, and we sort of got the news that, hey, this fire was starting to get to the point of serious threat, serious danger. Me and my brothers, we ended up kind of getting in my car and saying, well, let's go just take a look outside. And I remember kind of the wind being super extreme. The air quality was super dry and it was just like a really perfect storm of events. It wasn't until I got in the car with my brothers and kind of drove up the hill to get a better look at like where the fire was coming from and I saw it, did I actually realize how, how bad it really was. So we decided to evacuate from my dad's house to actually my mom's house who lives in Malibu, which we felt like would be a safer location, ironically. I remember my mom waking me up at four in the morning saying, JD, it just jumped the 101 freeway. I remember that being the moment of, all right, this could actually get over here now, so we need to think about that. But I was so exhausted and kind of wiped out that I just went back to sleep. And then an hour later, she woke me up and said, well, JD, we need to evacuate here. I just remember really like trying to pack up as much as I could and trying to grab the things that I felt like were essential. But what I always talk about, as I mentioned through my speaking events and the stuff I've done with the Red Cross is, in that moment, I grabbed all the stuff that meant something to me, like my clothes, my computer, my watches. And when I saw what my mom was grabbing, it was baby photos, mementos of the family, stuff for others. And that really stuck with me about that morning. We just grabbed what we could and got out of there. And I remember, again, not, not thinking it was gonna affect that house either, but also the, the fear of the initial house too in Oak Park. So at that point, I didn't know the future for either home. And uh, we evacuated to Santa Monica and we're just trying to get some rest and you know, kind of settle in again because I'm now, as I've mentioned, I'm on the second evacuation at this point. And I remember my mom turned on the news and they had a camera on the hillside of Malibu. And my mom woke me up after I'd kind of fallen asleep in just sort of a daze and said, JD, that's our house on the news burning down. And so about four or five hours after we'd made it to Santa Monica, we watched the homes in our neighborhood all burn. She was devastated and I was just sort of in shock. It was a terribly sort of rattling feeling to have to watch it and feel so helpless. A pretty common misnomer, and I think a lot of people can relate to, is when you're forced to evacuate and it's, you know, seven in the morning and you haven't slept and it's, there's fire around you, you're not thinking you're never gonna come back and see all these things. You're thinking, what can I grab to go to a hotel for a day or two before the firefighters come and handle this. When you realize you're never going back there again, it's a really crazy feeling. Since that experience, I've put so much less importance on material items than I've ever have. I've learned quickly how in the first week of losing all of my stuff, how little you actually need most of it. The clothes, the shoes, and all of that can be replaced. It's obviously unsettling. You have the things that are in your car that day and you sort of realize, wow, I have a completely fresh start here. And you don't really need a lot of that. What stage in life 
do you sort of put others before yourself? Watching my mom grab different things than I did sort of taught me what it is to be selfless in a moment of real peril, right? Where you don't have a lot of time and you're grabbing what's really important. In hindsight, I would have grabbed different things today than I would have when I was 22. The number one thing that I would advise and I felt like I've learned through all of this would just to be to never underestimate the situation at hand, right? Like as soon as you hear about something that's building in your, in your region, start to think about what should I grab, what do I need, what could I do without. Again, not expecting it to be as bad as it was, didn't have as much time as we would have liked another hour, so we could have saved a lot more of our stuff. So I think it's just not underestimating uh, the situation is, a, is a, something that I would advise people do. I would also say that in terms of being prepared is just kind of having maybe like a list of what you feel like you really would want to take if you didn't have much time. Keeping calm, trying to not overreact. As a final note is just knowing a, a safe place you can go to, like either a friend's house or a neighbor or somebody that you know you can go to in a time like this is smart to have prepared. My experience with the Woolsey fire, I'm totally okay, my family's totally okay, and my goodness in life, if that's the biggest, one of the biggest crosses I have to bear, then I'm so lucky. I've met so many people that deal with much, much worse situations from like physical health deterioration to loss of job or whatever it may be. I've seen them get through it and battle through it, and that's kind of what I write about. And I think the Woolsey fire did change my life in a really positive way too. We all have to kind of deal with sometimes these crazy unfortunate situations, but it's how we respond that matters. And uh, I was fortunate to have a great support system around me and I hope others out there can have that. And if there's anything I can do to help or speak towards that, I'm happy to do it.